I'm Paul Fry, I'm President of Chamber, and I'd like to introduce a number of our elected officials, some of whom we'll hear from again this morning, but I at least want to acknowledge them here. Of course, we have the Mayor Bob Brucci here this morning. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. We have all of our City Council members here. We have President of the Board, uh, Emily Keller. We have Vice President of the Board, Christian Alshire. We have Paul Quarterman, Council Member Lewis, Lou Metzner, and Council Member Don Munson. Let's welcome them here this morning. Good morning. We'll look forward to hearing from them here later this morning. Also want to acknowledge the County Commissioners who are here this morning. We have President of the Board, uh, Terry Baker. Good morning, Mr. Baker. Welcome. We also have Commissioner Jeff Klein, Vice President of the Board. Good morning, Jeff. Back there taking pictures, of course. If you ever need a photographer at your event and Jeff's there, he's the guy for you. And we also have Commissioner John Barr. Good morning, John. Wanted to acknowledge our city administrator, Valerie Means. I saw Valerie at breakfast. Good morning, Valerie. You're over here. How come you're not in your office working on a budget? Come on now. You need a break? Okay, all right. We also have, speaking of budgets, the county administrator, Greg Murray. Morning, Greg. And from the Washington County Board of Education, we have the Honorable Peter Bickford. Where did Hunt end up? Where is Peter? Oh, good morning. And I want to thank Peter. He was our great MC for the Washington County Business Awards recently. And speaking of those winners, we have representatives. We have our new Washington County Business Person of the Year, Al Martin. Good morning, Al. The only person I know with his very own walk-on music song. You can call me Al. We also have representing a large business of the year with Smith Elliott Kearns. They're here in attendance. Good morning, folks. Welcome. Congratulations. And Leading Edge Award representing Antietam Cable. Good morning, gentlemen. Congratulations. And representing Small Business of the Year, Bushy Fight Warren Architects. Good morning and congratulations. We expected to see you here with your trophies this morning. So Next event, bring them along. Also wanted to acknowledge uh, some chamber board members who are here this morning from the city of Hagerstown. We have Jill Frick from M&T Bank. We have Keith Grineau. We have from Visit Hagerstown, Dan Spedden. From State Farm Insurance, Steve Swain. And from the Greater Hagerstown Committee, Jim Kirchival. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> also wanted to acknowledge the Academy Theater, applause caterers. I have never been in this um, auditorium, this theater before this morning. It's beautiful. Let's give them a round of applause for hosting us. And after five productions, is take care of the podcast this morning. So if you want to see this again, Mr. Mayor and council members, see how you did, it'll be available to you. You know, I mentioned this at the State of the County a couple weeks ago, uh, why the chamber is such an important part and the business community is such an important part of State of the City and being engaged locally with our elected officials. Our mission is to foster, maintain a thriving business climate in which our members and our community can grow and prosper. We believe the private sector drives any community. However, you have to have a nice quality of life, good public schools, good public safety, arts and entertainment to make a nice, well-rounded community. Um, one of our four major goals is to be the voice of business. So obviously, we need to work well with our elected officials. And I think we have a good working relationship with our elected officials at the city level. We're uh, proud to partner with them on a number of initiatives. And also, um, we've had a, a successful community coalition this year. And the city was a major part of that um, work with us down in Annapolis. We had, I think, one of our most successful years in Annapolis. And of course, the city part of that coalition is important to us as well. We have a couple values um, that we pr uh, promote as leadership and advocacy. So we're dedicated to the growth, the chamber is, and the business community to the city of Hagerstown. We're also um, advocating for pro-business policies while protecting our vital resources. We think that's important. So we're proud to be part of this every year. Thank you for your cooperation and partnership with the city. And speaking of partnership and cooperation, again, we have a lot of great members and business community sponsors, and one of them is here this morning, uh, representing Wright Gardner, our sponsor this morning. Please help me welcome Kristen Wright. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for coming this morning. And once again, it's our pleasure at Wright Gardner to sponsor the State of the City. So we hope that you enjoyed your breakfast and now enjoy the presentation. And again, thanks for supporting the city. Wright Gardner has been in business over 100 years. They've been longtime supporters of downtown Hagerstown. Um, we have some of our insurance with Wright Gardner. They're very good to work with. And as Christian and other insurance carriers will tell you, you can never have too much insurance. Is that right, Christian? So if you need some, you know who to talk to. It's now my pleasure to introduce our first video for this morning. And it'll be, I think, a look back on the city. And so please enjoy. The city established itself as a premier city in the country for internet broadband services with the implementation of one gigabit service in the city center and adjacent areas. As a result of an initiative by the city to bring high-speed fiber to the premise internet service to our community and the initial implementation by Antietam Cable Broadband to provide the service, the city placed itself as one of less than 200 cities in the United States offering this economic development engine to the community. The service immediately began paying dividends for the city through its use by several private companies in the city center area. In our downtown, the city continued implementation of the community city center plan, a roadmap for development over 10 years through eight catalyst projects. Most notable is the Hagerstown Cultural Trail, now a fully walkable half mile route linking two of Hagerstown's most popular destinations, connecting the arts and entertainment district with City Park and the Washington County Museum of Fine Arts. Now that construction of the brick paver walkway is complete, look for more features and public art coming this spring and summer, including one of the landmark installations, the Mural of Unusual Size. The city is immensely thankful to our partners who donated land or provided easements and are now helping to promote the trail. The Main Street Hagerstown organization continued to gain momentum with more than 50 volunteers supporting the five work groups. Within the last year, these downtown advocates have executed visible changes drawing visitors to downtown with second Saturday events, beautifying a city center gateway along East Franklin Street, promoting a green main street by installing containers for recycling and trash, and sharing their work through a new website. Main Street also provided support to adjust standards for sidewalk displays for merchandise in our downtown. Through this process, changes were made to reach mutual goals featuring the business's merchandise, while keeping our city walkable and attractive. The city is supporting small businesses, entrepreneurs, and innovators at the Borough Box, a business resource center along West Washington Street. Borough is German for office. The center offers access to Wi-Fi, meeting space with audiovisual technology, collaborative workspace, and administrative functions like copying and printing documents. Renovations and fit out of the space was completed in 2016, and staff is currently working with our partners to program workshops and events. The city of Hagerstown supports our neighborhoods by addressing blight and nuisance issues, engaging our residents, and fostering personal responsibility in our community. In 2016, the city invited stakeholders, partners, and our residents to participate in the Mayor's Housing Summit to create an open dialogue and identify collaborative solutions to challenges like the concentration of poverty and the quality of housing stock in our older neighborhoods and enhancing subsidized and rental housing. Through the competitive negotiated sales process, the city was able to remove barriers to development and return properties to the private sector for investment opportunities. The city purchased a single family home along historic South Prospect Street that was up for tax sale, then sold it to a couple from Montgomery County who is now renovating the property. In addition, 4353 West Washington Street had some restorative repairs made and it is under contract to be returned to the private sector. Now it's slated to be a key structure in the project area for the proposed urban improvement project. The city previously implemented changes to our residential trash and recycling storage expectations. Recognizing the city's concerns about the appearance of trash bags and containers in our neighborhoods and along our downtown streets. Within the last year, code staff has revised those standards again, taking a stronger stand on efforts to keep our city looking its best. The city of Hagerstown engages in smart, sustainable government practices. We believe in increasing access to information. We balance our services and the maintenance of our resources within the means of our budget and in response to our community's needs. In 2016, the city removed one of Hagerstown's largest eyesore, the Municipal Electric Light Plant, or MELP. 
When the property owners defaulted on the agreement to complete the job, the city stepped in to responsibly address the situation and see that the site was not hazardous to the community. Staff continues to work through conditions regarding the future of the property in a way that does not create further burdens to our taxpayers and ensures safety. The Hagerstown Police Department is using new technology to enhance transparency in their operations and build greater trust between officers in our community. After completing a successful pilot program, body cameras were deployed for uniform officers on patrol, capturing police calls for service from an officer's perspective. This footage provides a better understanding of how police do their job and they're a tool to confirm accounts of officers and witnesses. Hagerstown's firefighters are serving the community with new equipment, a ladder truck that replaces a nearly 20-year-old piece of apparatus. Truck One is a reliable resource that uses the latest technology to streamline operations and improve safety when battling a fire. The department stretched its resources and took advantage of federal grant funding to enhance firefighter safety, providing new breathing apparatuses and turnout gear. Communication staff oversaw a redesign of the city's website, making the site mobile responsive and more streamlined, directing users to the information they're seeking within one or two clicks. The changes make resources and data readily available to users across multiple platforms. The Utilities Division is developing long-range plans for the watershed properties, the Edgemont Dam, and the Brickner Water Treatment Plant near Smithsburg. The transition to water treatment with chloramines has rendered the Brickner plant inoperable and the dam is in need of repairs. Upgrades are necessary and they are costly. Staff is working with engineers and the Maryland Department of the Environment to operate the dam in a safe, dry state and to explore options for the future. In Parks and Recreation, staff has repurposed a portion of the Fairgrounds Grandstand area to create an indoor recreation facility called the Fit Room at Fairgrounds Park. This has allowed staff to offer an expanded programming for all fitness levels, from yoga and square dancing to kickboxing and boot camp style workout. The Fit Room is located in the Junior Mason Parks and Recreation Complex, named after the former park superintendent who devoted 42 years of serving the Hagerstown community before retiring last year. Our city has made great strides over the last year, and this progress has positioned us well for the future. We thank you for your support, your feedback, and your participation in making Hagerstown a strong community and a location of choice. There's some pl applause. Come on now. Congratulations on a great last year, and I just wanted to give you a lay of the land for the rest of this morning. Um, we do have some cards. Uh, come on up, Mr. Mayor. We do have some cards. Uh, if you have questions, I know some have been passed around, but if you want to ask a question anonymously, put your hand up. We'll get your card. Once you've completed your question, please put your hand up. We'll have uh, staff grab that, and we'll bring it up to Aaron Petronetz. Aaron is our co-chair of our Governor Affairs Committee. Um, the mayor is going to have a few comments. He'll introduce a second video. Uh, he'll introduce, he'll bring the council members up. They'll have some comments. Aaron will then come up and moderate the question and answer process. So that's how we'll go this morning. Again, we're here at least till 9, and uh, we're happy to hear your questions, so please don't be shy. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you the mayor of the city of Hagerstown, Bob Brucci. Please just give him a round of applause. Well, good morning, and thank you all for being here, and thank Wright Gardner for their sponsorship once again of the state of the city. Appreciate that very much. Uh, we've seen where we've been. Now we're going to see where we're headed. Uh, we'll have a short video about what to look forward to in the coming year. And uh, then, as Paul said, we'll have our council come up and uh, we'll do a Q&A and hopefully get you folks out of here in plenty of time to get to work on time. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of the video. This administration is proud to report not only progress in our community, but viable plans to continue Hagerstown's momentum in the coming year. We are working to maintain a safe, vibrant community, one that welcomes business and development, fosters cultural experiences, and builds pride in our neighborhoods. And we will achieve these goals in a sustainable way, focusing on smart spending by balancing our city's needs and wants. We are prepared to take on challenges and act boldly to create positive change. The city of Hagerstown believes in investing in our community. We are proud to have a diverse, business-friendly economy that values the creativity of our local innovators. This administration will be carrying forward the community's city center plan for downtown development, 
recognizing the work and support that our partners, stakeholders, residents, and businesses have played in its creation and implementation. We will support and prioritize the eight Catalyst projects in accordance with the provisions of our municipal budget. We are proud to promote Hagerstown as a gigabit city. Both Antietam Cable and New Frontier Solutions has developed privately funded gigabit service through city center and select areas of Hagerstown. This connectivity creates opportunities for economic development by attracting creative service companies and tech-centered businesses. Downtown businesses are already seeing a difference in their operations with significantly higher internet speeds. Ultra high-speed internet connections means Hagerstown's businesses can think even bigger for expanding their existing enterprises. It opens up new, undiscovered opportunities for Hagerstown's entrepreneurs and startups. For residents, it means the innovations in smart home technology and entertainment will be delivered directly into their homes. We are excited to be a partner in the development to expand and enhance education and arts opportunities in our downtown through the Urban Improvement Project. The city has committed $1.5 million to support this endeavor in collaboration with Washington County Government, the University System of Maryland at Hagerstown, Washington County Public Schools, the Maryland Theater, and the State of Maryland. Main Street Hagerstown continues to be an asset for both community and economic development initiatives. We look forward to working alongside our volunteers to enhance our downtown business district in the future. This administration will be implementing new initiatives and restoring programs to position the city as a business-friendly partner to developers, investors, and property owners. Several of our economic development incentives have been so successful that we've exhausted funding. We will identify sustainable ways to restore funding and foster more private-public partnerships. In addition, the city will be reviewing our code and permitting processes. This administration has recently formed a permits inspection and code compliance review committee that consists of developers, realtors, architects, and city staff to reflect on our processes and identify areas that we can create more efficient and effective operations. Hagerstown residents enjoy a high quality of life in our neighborhoods. Living in walkable communities with access to amenities, parks, and recreation facilities. Our residents also benefit from more competitive rates on high quality utility services. We will find new and creative ways to protect our neighborhoods, eliminating blight and addressing nuisance issues from absentee property owners. We will support our neighborhood's first groups and engage with our residents to build community pride and ownership of our city. We value our park system and our recreation facilities and we make their care and maintenance a priority. Parks and Recreation staff is growing our program offerings, promoting comprehensive wellness across the community. This administration recognizes the value of minor league baseball, both as an economic development asset and a community amenity. And we look forward to keeping professional baseball in the hub city through a contract extension with the Hagerstown Suns. The city is responsible in maintaining our infrastructure, ensuring proper, consistent operations, and continuing a high level of service to our customers. The city of Hagerstown is investing in our public safety resources and taking a community oriented approach to ensuring that residents, businesses, and visitors feel safe. Rather than playing a defensive role, our public safety staff will be hands-on, connecting with our residents and businesses and being proactive in addressing neighborhood concerns. Look for our police officers on foot patrols in our downtown and you may meet some of our firefighters at your front door as they work to prevent the 911 call. We are working smarter, not harder with our public safety resources. That translates to more sustainable operations. Our fire chief supported a difficult decision to close a fire station, one that was becoming insufficient for operation. While this was an emotional transition for the volunteer members, the move will better serve our city by providing ladder trucks in the east and western areas of Hagerstown. In the coming months, the fire department will identify ways to enhance coverage and response times in all areas of the city. Look for an additional new ladder truck to go into service later this year. The Hagerstown Police Department values the relationships that have been built amongst businesses, residents, and our community stakeholders. We are challenging our law enforcement to go further, and they are participating in community conversations to gain new perspectives, completing training for fair and impartial policing, and sharing information with the public to foster greater trust. The City of Hagerstown is a committed partner in facing the heroin epidemic that has impacted not only our community, but our entire region. 
We believe in taking a collaborative approach through our community resources, from law enforcement to local health providers, to find treatment for the addicted. We applaud Washington County for developing a day reporting center, and we hope the community will support more diverse facilities for people struggling with addiction. We look forward to working alongside you to bring impactful change to Hagerstown throughout this mayor and council's administration. We encourage you to stay informed, become engaged, and get involved in our city's progress. Hagerstown is moving in a positive direction. And through a collective effort, we can lead the city into a future we all can embrace. I'd like to thank uh, uh, our, our great staff for putting that video together. They uh, uh, worked very hard on it, and it's, uh, it was, it's definitely worth having and uh, using, as it was pointed out by Scott Nice Warner, as we uh, go out and recruit new business, which is, I'm sure, what all of you want to hear about this morning is, how are we going to do that, right? Uh, you know, one of the things that we've done in the first 100 days is put together this Permits, Inspection, and Code Compliance Review Committee uh, so that real or perceived, it doesn't matter, we can make those businesses that are currently here looking to expand and do things like that and new businesses feel comfortable doing business in the city of Hagerstown. We want to be known as the safest city in, Hager in, in Maryland and the most friendly place to do business. And we're going to work very hard on that in the coming year. Uh, next year, hopefully, at the State of the City, uh, we can talk about increased economic development and those kind of things. And you're going to see a lot of change, uh, especially in the core and uh, 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 some of our surrounding areas right on the fringe, uh, which we're very excited about because uh, we know that, that bringing new business brings jobs to our people. And that's very important. Uh, if you noticed, <clears throat> uh, I'm sure you, if you're in downtown, you've seen our walking patrol police officers. They, they stop in at every business and uh, make sure they know that they're there. We've got some great feedback on that. I, I thank Chief Brito for uh, working very hard uh, to try to uh, realign his personnel uh, so that they're more efficient. Uh, I mean, they've always been efficient. Don't get me wrong. That probably wasn't the right word. But, you know, if we can utilize them for better coverage and to make our people feel safe, that's important. And that's what he's doing, so I appreciate that, Chief, very much. Uh, as you know, um, uh, we have a, uh, so, some new members of council. No, uh, no, she is not the president of the council, Paul, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> she said she got a promotion there. Yeah, well, no, she didn't. But. Of course, I might have been asleep for that. I don't know. I'd like to invite the council up to the, uh, up to the stage, please. Emily Keller, uh, Kristen Alshara, Lou Messner, Don Munson, and Paul Quarterman. And uh, thank you again for being here. We look forward to your questions. So while I'm waiting for you all to uh, vigorously sc scratch some questions on some paper, why don't I give the uh, council members a chance to say a few words if they'd like. Uh, Kristen, would you like to start? You're good. Paul? Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out today. Um, obviously, uh, being one of the new guys, uh, one of the new people here on the council, it's been a, uh, been a learning experience. It's something that I uh, am, am truly grateful for having the opportunity. So thank you for providing that, and I look forward to uh, supporting our city uh, as we do great things going forward. Thank you. Emily? Hey, good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here. I'm very excited to be on this side of the table. I sat out there last year while I was campaigning and hoped that I would be up here. So it's an honor to be here. I'm looking forward to the future of Hagerstown, and I'm confident we're moving in a good direction. So thanks for being here. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. As I look out on this crowd, I can't help but think that the you're a, a devoted and dedicated crowd to be out here on a rainy morning to see a bunch of politicians. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so our first question. <laughs> I'm just going to do it verbatim because it's pretty detailed. Last year, we were told that the city was trying to find a manager for the farmer's market. A year later, I ask, what is being done to put the farm back in the farmer's market? I guess as, as a vendor at the farmer's market myself, uh, I, I'm probably the most qualified sitting here to, to respond to that. Uh, there are a number of difficulties that, that we have uh, with the farmer's market. Um, the, probably the, the, the largest is getting vendors uh, to want to be there. Uh, Fifty years ago, uh, that was the place to go. That was the place to bring your, your goods and your wares um, on uh, Saturday morning. And the difficulty is uh, you can drive a quarter mile to a mile uh, nowadays around the city of Hagerstown and, and run into three or four farm markets, whether it's Greensburg or, or uh, Pennsylvania, uh, you name it, in any direction uh, around town, uh, they pop up everywhere. There are all kinds of organizations like the Elks Club and, and uh, Halfway Fire Company uh, that now sponsor farmers markets. Um, and the farmers themselves, you know, we're, we're the second uh, uh, largest producing uh, agricultural uh, county in the state of Maryland, uh, first in some areas. And the reality is that the farmer can get you to their farm uh, and uh, sell you uh, their goods and wares directly at the farm, you typically buy more. Uh, they're able to provide you a more diverse uh, amount of, of, of product to choose from. And so uh, I think for us, and I don't think it's just about the farmer's market downtown, uh, and I've said this for some time, if, if we want to have a farmer's market uh, like folks uh, may be aware in Lancaster and, and Baltimore, uh, frankly, uh, you can't do it uh, when you have 20 or 30 small farmers markets around the community uh, competing with the, the, for the same small number and, and decreasing number of vendors uh, to do it. Uh, that's a reality. Anyone else? Having said that, <laughs> I will tell you that we are looking at ways to increase uh, not only vendors in, the, in, in our farmers market, uh, but, have, but hours of operations. Uh, and we are uh, looking to partner uh, with uh, uh, with an entity that will help us do that. So that's that's not out of the question to uh, to bring back that. I, I'm not a vendor, but I'm there every Saturday morning. Uh, but uh, I enjoy it. Thank you. Anyone else? Good. All right. Uh, next question. Could you speak to? Uh, in particular, funding for the PEP program and other, uh, and other uh, incentive programs that uh, have become extremely successful, I can speak from experience, and uh, at attracting downtown business and, and going forward having some certainty as, as to what their, their status is. I was going to speak about that in my comments, but I figured I'd save you guys from it. Um, you know, we're facing a very difficult budget season coming up for the city of Fagerstown. And we've got to be creative in how we not only balance the budget, but go back and fund those, uh, uh, those programs that have been very successful. Uh, not only the PEP, but the first third grant program. Uh, these have been successful programs in, in, in Hagerstown, and we have to go back and find ways uh, uh, to, to be able to fund those programs again. I believe we can do it. Uh, you know, we. There's, there's definitely no shortage of uh, intelligence and knowledge at staff level. Uh, I question sometimes the elected officials, but myself in particular. But they definitely know how to do this. So we will go back and we will uh, work toward funding those successful programs again. Uh, and Paul Quarterman, probably one of the uh, most outspoken about this, uh, uh, says, listen, if, if we can fund the first or grant program the way we did the first time, we can pull off four or five projects in the core uh, every year for the next three years. That would make quite an impact. Uh, and I believe that too. So I believe we can do it. Paul, you want to add anything? Well, I, I think you hit on a lot of the fronts right there. Um, I mean, as, as part of my major, uh, one of my major points during my campaign is, is we have to broaden the tax base. Uh, in order to broaden the tax base, we need to find ways, as, as the mayor alluded to, creative ways to, to have these incentives um, for these programs. These programs proved very successful in the past. Um, the PEP program, First Third, and even the, um, 
uh, assistance programs with some of the, uh, the home buying. Um, that's obviously another uh, big thing that needs to be looked at. Um, but I'm very encouraged going forward. I think this, uh, this administration uh, is on board uh, with seeing those things come to light. Um, the reality is, as the mayor indicated, that uh, we are facing a, a difficult uh, budget and some decisions are going to have to be made. Um, but I feel confident that we're going to make the correct decisions to, uh, to lead our, our community forward. So, here's a good one. What is being done to keep the Sun Stadium? <laughs> Why do you look at me, Aaron? <laughs> Listen, uh, currently, as I'm sure you're all aware, the, you know, the city of Hagerstown and the Hagerstown Suns have a lease through the, through the 2018 season, at least. Uh, so that gives us two years yet uh, in total uh, um, to be able to come up with some kind of a viable project or pathway at least to retain an amenity in this community. Uh, not everyone's on board with that, I understand that. Uh, and not everyone sees the economic benefit as, as others do. But I also believe, and just like public art, <laughs> if you don't have those amenities, then you can't attract the people with expendable income into your community. They're just not, because they want to be someplace where they can spend their expendable income. Uh, so I believe that we can work through this and actually you know, come to some kind of an agreement uh, um, in, in order to retain minor league baseball. You know, the Nationals want to be here. They, they like this location. It suits their needs. It's an hour to Potomac, to D.C., to you know, Harrisburg, all, you know, where they have their other minor league teams and their major league team. So we're right in that area that suits their, their needs for location for player development. Um, I look forward to working with them. But, you know, we just have to sit down and have, actually have a conversation about it and uh, uh, try to get the community feedback that we look for. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Um, I'm going to say something here that's probably somewhat unpopular. Uh, when the Ripken report was conducted, uh, I don't know. Uh, 2012. Yeah, six years, seven years. Uh, one of the telling things in that report was that 50% of the current, the current fan base for games uh, comes from the uh, I-81 corridor. Um, you know, not everything, not everything can be uh, in the core. Uh, and, you know, uh, the reality is, uh, out of the entire league, uh, we clearly have the lowest, by far, uh, attendance base. And for me, uh, you know, the city cannot afford uh, this project. Uh, it, it, given our budget constraints, I don't think we could afford the renovation. Um, and so the reality is, uh, this isn't a, a city uh, issue, uh, it is a county uh, wide issue. It's a state issue. It's a city issue. So it would take all of those partners uh, to accomplish a project of that magnitude. And uh, uh, clearly, uh, the report would indicate that its most viable uh, uh, possibility for, for, for success uh, location is along the ID1 corridor. I know that there's been at least three studies in, in the last 20 years that have uh, indicated uh, efforts to that effect. Uh, that said, I would reiterate, as I do like a broken record, that uh, we own the stadium property. Um, and when I look at amenities like this, uh, where we have to pick and choose where our limited funds are invested, uh, I continue to believe that that property, the property uh, in, in which where the stadium currently sits, uh, would make a great place for an indoor turf facility uh, to capture the thousands of our youth that are leaving this community with their parents every week to play at other venues for a dozen different sports uh, uh, in other counties. I don't think it's an either or war. Uh, I think it's, why well, can't we have both, but that's my feelings. Go ahead. Turn into a debate? No, nope, not turn <laughs> into a debate. Uh, next. Uh, could any of you speak to the plans for and the status of our, our water infrastructure, both reservoir and, and treatment? And uh, like you said, if there's going to be 
work or renovation done? Um, are there any backup or emergency plans in place to, to cover those costs? Well, the, the issue I'm assuming that's being discussed is Smithsburg, the Brickner plant, and the Edgemont Reservoir. Um, so we have two decisions, uh, actually one decision to make. Do we keep the Edgemont Reservoir and get the Brickner plant back up to operation or do we shut it down? Um, I know at least two of us, and I believe the majority of us, feel that we would be extremely foolish in giving up um, a water resource. There are very, very few communities that have the resources that we do in Hagerstown with regards to not only the Potomac River, but Edgemont. Is it going to be expensive? Well, the bad news is there are two choices. Like I say, either, either get rid of the dam or redo it, and both of those are major seven-figure projects. So we're going to spend millions of dollars to shut it down, or we're going to spend millions of dollars to keep it in operation. I personally, uh, and I think the majority of us, feel that we have to keep it in operation. It will be paid for the same way everything else is paid for in the utility world by the uh, users of our water service. I think it's important to understand in the city of Hagerstown that our water system provides more uh, service outside of the city than we do inside the city. Uh, we provide service to three other municipalities. And if, uh, if I could, in your minds for a moment, uh, use a diagram. So the two choices are this. Uh, we keep the Edgemont Reservoir or we duplicate or, uh, uh, our service from the Potomac. And uh, there's a difference there, uh, long-term cost-wise, because the cost uh, to pull it from the Potomac means pushing it uh, up a hill. Uh, the cost to, to bring it from Edgemont means uh, um, you know, having it fed by gravity. And uh, it goes uh, even further than that, uh, whereby uh, if we pull it from the Potomac, that's a single source coming into the city and then spreading out. And it's all about pressurization. And I don't know if Mike's uh, around, and I'll probably get some of this wrong, but uh, what we have is a service location on the west end with the reservoirs. We have the Edgemont Reservoir, the natural reservoir, and we have the Potomac. And if you think of, of, of our community then, water-wise, as a triangle, uh, your best, your best course of action, because once you give up that water source, the state will never give it back to you, uh, is to have that triangulization, if you will, of that source creating pressure coming into the community from the Smithsburg area, from the West End area, and from the Potomac area. And so that to me is the critical component of keeping the Edgemont, not just the source itself, but if any one of those three go down, then you have the other two to sort of backfeed into the system and keep that system viable uh, much more readily than if you're pulling everything from one location. And we've already had a number of experiences with spills on the Potomac River, uh, which makes you want to have another source. And that's when we uh, actually had an environmental protection agency, and it appears that that's not going to be in existence very much longer. So we really need to have that second source. And in addition to that, um, we have little or no control over the Potomac River. We don't own it. Uh, and uh, sometimes we have to question how uh, much our, our opinions are valued. It's absolutely essential, I believe, for us to have a second source of water. And Lou is absolutely right about the cost. We, we spend a whole lot of money to shut it down, or we spend a whole lot of money to keep it going. And it's uh, going to be necessary for the people who use water to pay for that water. And there's no question in my mind that in the years coming, Hagerstown and Washington County are going to grow. Uh, and um, we're going to be we're going to need those water resources to make sure that that growth is possible. Anyone else? All right. So the next one is about uh, sort of general cleanliness of the city. Um, it, is there anything to improve the street sweeping capabilities of the city? Um, you know, make it a more attractive place so that, that uh, you know, it, people want to come downtown and, and be here. Um, not just garbage containers, but actual trash in the streets. I'm probably going to get a lot of negative feedback on this comment, but <laughs> if 
If you remember, those, those who are probably my age or, or, or maybe even a little bit older, um, I used to come down every Saturday morning to pay my paper bill when I had a paper route. Uh, and uh, every Saturday morning, uh, the sidewalks were wet, uh, you know, and it didn't rain. It was the property owners and store owners who would go out on Saturday morning before before their customers started showing up and clean in front of their property. You know, true, we, we have a responsibility to our citizens to maintain a clean and safe environment for our citizens. Uh, but as a business owner and a property owner, I would want to be proud of my establishment and keep my area as spotless as possible. Uh, so maybe, you know, we can work with Main Street uh, to try to figure out a way to put in place a program that not only requires us to do our job, okay, as a city, but also gets some help with that from those business owners and, and, and uh, 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 even residential owners, uh, especially in the core. Like shoveling snow. Like, like shoveling snow. There, there is an answer, and I can tell you what it's not. <laughs> it's not a stick every single time, okay? You can't apply a stick to every issue. So we have, and I know that Kristen ha has been working on this also, and we've talked about it, uh, and, and we'll be coming in front of council at some point in time uh, to try to figure out a better program than what we have in place where all we do are you know, that's a fine for this and a fine for that and a fine for this. Let's try to figure out something that, uh, that makes sense, that keeps those ugly trash receptacles off the, off the street and things like that. Uh, and it can be done. We have a, a, a great alleyway system in our city. Uh, I think it's time we start using that. Anybody else? We get asked this question all the time about, about downtown being dirty, and I'll be honest with you, I don't see it. I, I walk around downtown all the time. I don't think it's, it's horribly dirty that people describe it. Maybe it's perception, and I think we could all do better at, at cleaning up, and the, the trash receptacles are a problem, but we have houses that are very close together and alleyways that are very small, so I, I definitely welcome any suggestions that anyone has on it but we honestly I get asked this question constantly and I just I don't think it's that dirty here I you know, it was just my opinion <laughs> these are their questions you don't have to look at me <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot domestic <laughs> you know I, I tell my staff uh, at the municipality the town that I work for uh, you know uh, w when I hire them and bring them in I say look you know you're going to get more questions about trash than you will anything else. I don't care what size the town is. That's a reality of, of, of working in, in, uh, for, for a local government. Uh, but I did, I, I, you know, I went through and did, did an analysis of, of our uh, uh, particular issue. Uh, came up with about 13 points that, that, that I'm hoping we'll, we'll discuss, uh, and I think some of which staff has already implemented. But I'll just speak to two of them as it applies to the core. Uh, the core, unlike the rest of the city, still gets twice a week trash service. So even at its very base, it's still, you're still seeing that trash. There's, there's still twice as many opportunities during the course of the week for trash to, you know, to, to be present, to blow around. Uh, and, and there are a number of things uh, to address that. But two in particular, for me, uh, I think that, that speak to Bob's uh, question of, of incentive versus uh, the stick. Uh, and one of those is spending about $60,000 to provide the uh, residential uh, properties downtown with uniform totes, just like we do the, the, the recycling totes, uh, because there is no uniformity uh, in how trash is, you know, and, and I lived downtown when I was a kid for some time, you know, you, you run down and you toss the bag out and you hope it gets to the curb, uh, you know, it might fall over, and that's what happens uh, in a lot of cases. So that's one thing uh, that I think is a fairly economical, easy fix. The second is uh, an item that I think would save a, a lot of uh, rental property owners, and that uh, is to, to get them off of the, the, the per unit uh, trash pickup and actually work to place uh, um, uh, dumpsters 
uh, behind some of these places in sort of strategic locations uh, because frankly you go to a six or an eight or a ten unit uh, apartment building and, and there may not be uniformity in how or who sets the trash out for, 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 for the particular trash night and in this case you know you wouldn't have that presence then uh, twice a week you wouldn't have that presence uh, uh, to the volume and degree that you see you know, uh, piled up on the curb in front of some of the properties on a weekly basis. And so those are just two items that I think are, 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 are ways that we can create incentive and savings to the property owners uh, to, to actually accomplish some of that goal. Good. I want to take a specific question to ask about street sweeping. Um, like everything else, believe it or not, it is not inexpensive. Um, so that's what it all gets down to. Uh, another street sweeper costs a lot of money, and that's why we haven't purchased one. Um, last week, one day I was in City Hall and I left. And as I walked out the door, I looked across the street, and most of you probably know that there is an and new a relatively new, it's been only there a few weeks, antique shop across the street from City Hall. And um, as I looked across the street, I saw the lady who works in the antique shop, um, who's the mother of the guy who owns the antique shop, washing the windows. And uh, so I stood there a while and watched. And then when she finished the windows, she started washing the woodwork down on the front of the antique shop. And it occurred to me that, and I think the mayor touched on this, that if we could encourage more of that somehow, that uh, we would certainly be a much cleaner downtown. Um, and probably to keep it clean, uh, <laughs> it's going to cost, it's going to cost money, uh, which, uh, is a, is a difficult issue in, in, in this particular year that we're living in. No one else on that one? All right. Um, I, I don't have any more cards, but I have a question. Um, could you speak to the, uh, the drug addiction and, and, uh, and crime problem issue and uh, sort of what the goals are and, and if any progress in this short amount of time has been made? You know, I can, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll speak to the crime portion of it, and everybody knows that Emily can speak to the, um, the heroin epidemic portion of it and what we need there. Um, you know, we have, uh, uh, and the, the chief standing in the back of the room, and, and again, I'll, uh, you know, I'll give a hats off to him. Um, he answers my phone call every time I call, uh, so <laughs> that's a plus. But... Um, you know, they are, uh, uh, HPD is in a process of, of uh, uh, going through some, some, some changes just to see what works the best. Uh, it's going to be a trial and error kind of a thing, and we know that, uh, because unfortunately, you know, crime seems to morph like everything else in life. Uh, but uh, I know that we've beefed up our uh, direct patrol unit, which is kind of like the old street crime unit. Uh, I know, again, that we have walking men now in downtown in the core, 24-7, 365. Now, you're still going to see a large presence of, of, of uh, police uh, when we have big events and, and things like that at the Maryland Theater. But these walking men are there 24-7. Well, there's always going to be somebody or two individuals in the core walking. Uh, and I think that's important because... Not only does it give people who come to the core a little sense of security, but it also allows those individuals that may be detrimental to what our core, what we want our core to be, to understand that, listen, there's always going to be eyes on you. And I applaud the chief and HPD, uh, again, for working through those personnel issues to come up with that right mix. Listen. Everybody knows, everybody's, everybody here has social media of one, one sort or another. And we all see those great, you know, top tens of cities and, you know, Hagerstown has the ugliest man and stuff like that. But, you know, here's the deal. I want to be on that list 
that says, I want to be in the top 10, actually I want to be in the top three of the safest cities in Maryland. And damn it, that's my goal. And I believe our chief back there is the guy to get us there. So thank you again, chief. Re regarding the drug addiction portion of it, just to put it in perspective, Washington County as of March 1st has had 50 reported overdoses. If we continue down that path by the end of 2017, that's 600 overdoses. Maryland as a whole in 2016 had 2,000. So we're struggling big time. And this is a public health crisis, not a policing issue. I mean, we need to treat the cause of the opioid addiction. And right now we're handing out Narcan like crazy, but unfortunately it's like putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound or, you know, it's, it's saving lives, which is great, but we're not getting anyone into treatment because we don't have any treatment facilities. So I think not just Hagerstown, Washington County as a whole has to really take a look at a, a detox center or some place where an addict, when they say, I'm ready to get help, they can go get help. We don't have that option now. The entire state is struggling and unfortunately it's, it's in our backyard, it's here, and we need to start talking about it very publicly and find some solutions. So I think everyone involved, I mean, I've, I've met with all the hospitals here, the doctors, rehab centers, I think we're all on the same page. It's just reaching out and finding funding and, and solving, solving this crisis because they're, you know, we're seeing the, the byproducts of addiction with the, the petty thefts and, and the crime that's happening, but we're also having babies born addicted to opioids in the hospital here, and it's, it's a whole other generation is going to be suffering from the consequences of what's happening right now. So it's definitely a priority, and we need to fix it now. <laughs> it, uh, address it very briefly, especially on the drug side. Um, it's a question that, that takes hours, if not days, for debate. But if someone is looking for a simple solution, good luck. Um, I attended North High, graduated North High in 1970. I can still remember in the 1960s, sitting in the auditorium at North High and seeing the movies about LSD and the drugs that are killing the generation. Um, I remember Nancy Reagan, just say no. I remember the D.A.R.E. program. Everybody has a solution, and the solution is personal responsibility and education. Uh, there are more mental health professionals working in our prison systems in this country than there are in mental health hospitals. The amount of mental health hospitals that exist in the state of Maryland, if I'm correct, are about two. Um, there is no simple solution, and the, the decision that the way <coughs> to win this war is through enforcement is just the old theory of um, the definition of insanity, and I think you all know what that is. So I wish I had an easy solution, and the only other thing I would say, this is not a problem for the city of Hagerstown. It is not a problem for Washington County. It is not a problem for the state of Maryland. This is a nationwide problem, uh, and in fact, probably the state that has the largest problem in the nation is our bordering state of West Virginia, and it is crept from West Virginia. Um, in my practice of law, the, the heroin stuff started in Cumberland probably 10 years ago before it ever arrived here. Uh, and really, uh, quite candidly, as I look at the crowd, I'll be very careful in how I say this, but this has become a national problem only since it started to address middle and upper class Caucasian folks. As long as it was an issue that was in the ghetto, there was a very simple solution to it. Just lock them up. But boy, it's amazing as a practitioner of law to see how that theory has changed when it's your children and it's your neighbors. But as long as it was the people in the hood there wasn't a problem with the solution, just throw them in jail. Um, and so now at least we're looking at it from the perspective that it needs to be looked at, and that is from a mental health and disease-oriented problem. And um, I would like to point out that uh, the governor has certainly taken the initiative in recent days to uh, point out uh, 
the cost of the problem and to uh, offer uh, at least some financial help in the uh, a way to, to help solve the problem. All right. So this is a suggestion in the form of a question. <laughs> Could the city work with the county to relocate some of the human service agencies to Winter Street School? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I remember as a commissioner, this, this gentleman emailed me uh, one time uh, about, you know, uh, keeping the homeless over at the REACH shelter where they belong. And this individual lived out uh, beyond Paramount at uh, whatever that neighbor is, Potomac Valley or, or, or Pleasant Valley, some, some, some pleasant place, you know. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, and I respond, and I'm like, you know, these people aren't criminals, number one, all right? The library is a public place. Uh, uh, and, and number two, uh, certainly didn't want them anywhere near uh, his neighborhood. Uh, wanted to make sure that they were still somewhere downtown. And I have to laugh a little when, when the suggestion is uh, that, that, that you simply, you know, pick up your problem and put it somewhere else downtown. Uh, I, I find that to, 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 to be a joke. Um, and, and I say this because, and I think it speaks a little to, to the last question, um, you know, we need to provide these services. I've said that over and over. Uh, but we cannot be, we cannot be a destination for this region, for this state, for these services and expect to succeed uh, in all of the things that we want, like uh, a, a viable tax base, you know, strong amenities, uh, uh, by, by, by being uh, that destination place. So last question was a good suggestion as well. I'm just gonna go down the line and, uh, and ask each of you what your number one priority is for the year of 2017, so. Mr. Mayor? Well, why don't you start down there with Don and we'll come back. <laughs> but mine's gonna be all of the above. Uh, you know, listen, I, I don't have a number one. Uh, I have to focus on crime. I have to focus on economic development. I have to focus on infrastructure. I have to focus on all those things. I don't have a number one. Uh, you, you know, government's, government's job you keep in mind, government has no money. You, 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 you all realize that, right? It's not our money. We don't, we don't have any money. We use everybody else's money, okay? So government's job is to spend that money correctly. And in order to, uh, to meet that goal, you know, we have to focus on uh, the needs of the people, which are public safety, infrastructure. Uh, we don't actually create jobs. If we create jobs, guess what? We create more 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 government jobs, which means we take more money from the people to pay for those jobs. You know, our our responsibility is to create the infrastructure, to create those, to, to have the private sector create those jobs. And, you know, we're going to focus on that. Uh, we're going to be, uh, 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 Joe Frick's here someplace in this audience. We are, we, we, we are going to be laser focused on economic development. Uh, you know, we, we, we have as was mentioned in the video, we're one of less than 200 cities, you know, that, that are um, a, a, a gigabyte city. We need to be out there beating that drum all over the place, and we will. Uh, so, yeah, it's all the above for me. So whatever Don says and, and Lou says and, and Emily says and Paul says and Kristen says, I'm in. And then so. Here's your chance, guys. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you know, four years ago, that question was, was, I think, just as simple as it is today. Four years ago, it was uh, uh, the removal of MELP. I thought it was a good, sort of succinct, uh, uh, you know, community uh, interest uh, issue. And we accomplished that. Uh, it was one of my top five goals of the last administration. And after 60 years, I think, of folks staring at it, uh, we accomplished that. And I think it's good. For me today, and I say this often, um, downtown needs a theme. That theme is education. Uh, we need higher education opportunities in this community. And uh, I think downtown is a great place to accomplish that. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've spent about 60 to $70 million on education-oriented projects. 
more than anything else we spent money on downtown. And so for me, it's the whatever you want to call that project. Uh, it's had seven different <laughs> names now. Uh, I still think it's a, a second high school and, and the expansion of the University of Maryland uh, project. But, but for me, uh, that's been a goal for years. Uh, I think that, that for me, that is the number one priority uh, because it is a strong showing of uh, every level of government working together with the private sector uh, to reinvigorate the one thing we all continually talk about, uh, which is downtown. As the mayor indicated, I'm sure uh, all the ideas that, uh, and goals that this administration has, we're all going to be working uh, together collaboratively to, uh, to put our best foot forward for the city of Hagerstown. Uh, personally, what, what I'm pretty much focused on at the moment is the, uh, the relationships with not only uh, the business community here, along with, uh, with the city, is with the implementation of the Permits and Codes and Inspection Process Review Committee, um, something I was very passionate about. Uh, getting involved in this to begin with is just to try to remove that stigma that uh, Hagerstown is not business friendly, uh, when in fact I think we can be extremely business friendly and uh, as, as Hagerstown grows, so will Washington County and, and the state of Maryland. So I'm extremely excited about this committee. I know there's some members here in attendance today, so I appreciate them coming out. We had our first meeting last week, um, had some great ideas come out of that and um, I look forward to some positive uh, solutions. So at the end of this, uh, we will be able to, uh, to work together. Thank you. I have two goals for this, this next year, my first year in office. Um, first, from my council role, I want to continue to get to know each department within the city and try to piece together how everything works and what's working well, what's not working well, because I think in order for me to make good decisions for the rest of my term in office, I need to have an understanding of how everything really works. So I've spent the first couple weeks trying to meet with everyone and, and have a clear understanding going forward. So that's definitely my biggest goal and my personal goal over the next year, I'm pretty sure it's well documented, is to get us a detox center. <laughs> There's the, um, the good news and the bad news. So the, the goal that you have to have is the mayor has put forward is the budget, which is going to be an ugly thing this year, to say the least. Um, I think we're going to have to deal with either tax increases or reduction of services. And I say um, tax increases not by rate increases, because a rate increase uh, and this year is just going to get us to the same tax level. So that's on the rather depressing side. On the really positive side, however, um, is what Councilman Alshire mentioned. So if I had a goal for the four years, not the one year, but when we're done this administration, I look forward to being able to say what this administration accomplished was the expansion of the Maryland Theater, the expansion of the Barbara Ingram School, the arts, the expansion of the University of Maryland system in Hagerstown. Um, we are on the verge of a generational achievement that to my knowledge has never occurred in this county. And that is the city of Hagerstown, Washington County, the state of Maryland, the Board of Education, and private investors all involved in the largest renovation project in the history of downtown Hagerstown in this county. And I look forward to the end of four years of this term being able to stand out in that plaza in back of the state's attorney's office and district court uh, and, and see what has happened in this community along with our cultural trail. Uh, thank you. I guess my uh, bottom line is <clears throat> I just want to see Hagerstown work. And that takes a lot of effort a lot of thought, a lot of planning. When people say to me, how's Hagerstown doing? Um, I often say back to them, there's never a dull moment in Hagerstown because every time we turn our computers on to check our emails, there's some kind of a new problem that has come along or some variation on an old problem. And Everyone who has spoken has spoken to uh, important aspects of what needs to happen in Hagerstown in the future. And I agree with everybody, just as the mayor does. 
And I would like to say this, that one of the things I would like to see in Hagerstown, and I, I know Kristen agrees with this, and I'm sure everybody else agrees with this, is for this to, to be a college town, meaning that we need to encourage the growth of the college, and it is growing, and thing, good things are happening, and the city of Hagerstown's working with them, and I noticed that Mark was with us today, and he's working very hard to make things happen. And uh, you know, what I want to see basically in, at the end of this four years uh, is a thousand new students coming and going on the streets in downtown Hagerstown, making and helping the businesses work. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you all. Thank you all. <laughs> And speaking of thank you, let's give Aaron a round of applause for moderating. Good job. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> I also want to, again, thank the mayor and council members. Thank you for working on behalf of the city and its residents. We know it's sometimes a thankless job, so we're saying thank you at least once today. We appreciate your work and efforts and being open and accessible to us. And what I heard from the videos and from the conversation here is uh, we are moving in a positive direction as a city. This is exciting, talking about uh, working on eight catalytic, catalytic initiatives, the Gigabit City, the Urban Improvement Project is exciting, public safety. You know, someone mentioned trash, and many of you know my background is restaurants, my first 26 years of working as a career. I worked for Roy Rogers for 20 years. It took me two years to stop picking up trash inside of Roy Rogers when I left that organization. It's still hard for me to go into McDonald's and not pick up their trash. But I would say as a downtown resident or a city owner or a person downtown, you know, we worked with the University of Maryland with Mark Halls and his team and, and Jim Stone, um, the person who owns our building. And I think it's right. It's the residents, it's the business owners who can work together. And there's no shame in picking up a piece of trash in the street. There's trash cans all over. And it's a little self, I'm a little self-conscious, but sometimes I'll see a trash, I'll pick it up, put it in a trash can. I think if we all do that, we'll have a better looking city. I think it's part of uh, working in partnership. So thank you for the work you're doing on our behalf. Um, again, I just want to mention a couple of things coming up. Business After Hours, Thursday, March 16th, from 5 to 7 at Mercersburg Academy. If you haven't been to Mercersburg Academy, it's a beautiful facility. The food is unbelievable. They have great chefs because these students pay $40,000 a year to go to school there, and they want them happy. So if you haven't been there, it's great food. And you can win $3,000, but you have to be there to win. Also, Teacher of the Year. It's April 26th, it's coming up here in less than two months. Fountainhead Country Club, again, April 26th. You know, it's important. We talk about education, and it's important to have good education. We have a great public school system, um, and we think it's a great way to acknowledge what our teachers are doing on our behalf. If you haven't been there, it's truly moving to hear these teachers are nominated, the impact they have on our students, our future workforce, so consider that. And we're doing our part to help the downtown uh, Hagerstown thrive. As you know, we're moving to the... Um, to our new office on the Professional Arts Building. August 1st is our deadline. And we look forward to being there. We'll have more space. We'll have more opportunities for meetings there. And we'll also be able to help you promote your business. We'll have some opportunities for naming, some rooms there, surrounded by lots of activity downtown. So we're doing our part. We believe in the city of Hagerstown. We thank you for your, your attendance this morning and safe travels as you move out of here. Thank you.